Hello, yes. Good morning to you all. On behalf of uh, the Catalan Media Corporation and the Fundació La Marató de TV3, I welcome the Congress members who are with us here, and also those of you who are in your countries of origin, teleworking or from your workplace via streaming. So before I introduce you, uh, everyone that's uh, here with us today, I'd like to remind you that after the presentations, that there's going to be a Q&A, questions and answers. So you gotta use the app to uh, introduce your questions if you have any at the end of uh, the presentation, just to remind you. It's a little reminder before uh, beginning. It is both a pleasure and a great privilege that the International Hospital Federation and the Unió Catalana d'Hospitals has invited us to this Congress as a model of success to be able to present a project so singular, so socially supportive, and of such great magnitude and social projection as La Marató de TV3 and Catalonia Radio, which moreover is celebrating its 30th edition this year. The excellent public mobilization and support of an initiative organized by the Catalan Public Television and Radio and the Fundació La Marató de TV3 make this foundation one of the great driving forces of biomedical research of excellence. The foundation's other goal is to raise social awareness about the different diseases, a mission that is achieved thanks to the public participation campaigns publicity sessions, and a variety of events to spread the message. There are anonymous people working with Lamarato, and there are also well-known personalities from the worlds of culture and sport. Here we have a short sample of what Lamarato is. There's one day in the year everybody jots down on the calendar so nobody misses the big day. It's a celebration of solidarity that mobilizes thousands of people. The telephone is a hit. I think we should need to start again. The life, the life. <laughs> what? Life. Director, director. Life, yeah, that's what happens on live events. Let's see if we can make it possible. Okay, we're gonna figure out how to see it. It's gonna be in a moment. So we are hearing it and we'll be seeing it in a minute. <laughs> We'll be able to see it. There you go. Almost there. There's one day in the year everybody jots down on the calendar so nobody misses the big day. It's a celebration of solidarity that mobilizes thousands of people. Telephone is a huge charitable project that is held on a Sunday in December every year. It features over 15 hours of live broadcasting by TV3 and Catalonia Radio. Its purpose is to raise funds, boost public awareness of serious diseases and foster related scientific research. But the telephone goes far beyond TV3 and Catalonia Radio's programming. The activities it spans run through the year and people from every walk of life take part in it. One of the hallmarks of the TV3 telephone is the social mobilization surrounding the event. It includes many grassroots activities by a host of Catalan associations. The enthusiasm that goes in them shows a huge social support commanded by the telephone. Year after year, massive public support means we chalk up amazing results, putting us on a par with the world's biggest and best telephones. Every two years, the Foundation makes a call to choose the disease or group of diseases that the next telephone will focus on. Members of the public are also involved in the choice and are asked to make suggestions. 
The Foundation trustees, together with the Scientific Advisory Board, approve and publicize the proposals for each edition of the telethon. Their evaluation of the submissions is based on a wide range of criteria, including impact and the ability of Catalonia's research group to advance knowledge in a given disease field. Early in the year, program teams of the Foundation start to work in the public awareness campaign. In doing so, they draw on advice from top experts of the chosen disease. The public awareness and publicity campaign builds up after the summer with thousands of informative sessions at schools, libraries and civic centers. The telethon also uses advertising channels such as TV banners and posters. There is also a special edition of a book and a CD to which cultural personalities and artists contribute for free. The business world also helps the telephone through both funding and logistics support. This makes it possible to spend all the money raised on public awareness campaigns and on research. Contributors such as Movistar, Fundación La Caixa and Ogilvy have participated since the very first edition. Huge technological infrastructure swings into action on Telephone Day. For temporary telephones exchanges in Catalonia received the thousands of phone calls from donors that push up the fundraising marker throughout the session. The sheer scale of public mobilization in Catalonia for the telephone can be seen through the work of volunteers, who are one of the more visible signs of support of the charitable cause. Coordinated by the Department of Employment, Social Affairs and Families, volunteers give their time to answer thousands of calls from donors and to provide all their support for the program. The telephone also spreads scientific knowledge and provides information and entertainment. Witnesses play a leading role. There are people with first-hand experience on the disease as either sufferers or their family members. The program becomes a show thanks to top national and international artists who perform for free. After the program, the funds raised reached the biomedical research teams a few months later. In October, the trustees announced what the donation will be spent on. Their decision is the result of a rigorous selection process in which only the best projects are chosen. Project evaluation is carried out by an international panel of experts. The Telephone Foundation earmarks the fund raised from donations to outstanding biomedical research. The projects chosen are required to make significant advances in improving patients' quality of life and life expectancy. In doing so, it funds Catalonia scientific community, helping it to achieve new heights. During the year, the foundation, working hand in hand with research centers, opened the lab to the general public. On these lab open days, researchers spell out what they do with the funds raised from donations. This fosters both transparency and a sense of public involvement. The telephone also visits university classrooms to evaluate the various impacts of the event, for instance, in economic, communication and biomedical spheres. A huge festive fundraising drive that benefits society as a whole, the telephone belongs to everyone and its activities run throughout the year. So before I move on to the different speeches, I'd like to say that I'm really honored to be able to take part in this event because personally and professionally, La Marató has had a great presence over the years and remains present today. I've been able to see it as a member of the public, but especially as a professional linked to the TV corporation, presenting it and collaborating from many formats. And the truth is that La Marató makes a mark on you. And it is, it is a, a deep mark, a deep one. Now, I have the pleasure of giving the floor to Mr. Luis Bernabé, which is uh, the director of the Fundación La Marató de TV3, with his speech, a unique charity project, La Marató de TV3 and Catalonia Radio, which celebrates its 30th anniversary this year. Please go ahead, Mr. Bernabé. Thank you. Good morning. Although you might not believe it, it's 9.30, as you know, uh, in the morning, and we are in Barcelona. You are attending one of the first sessions of the Congress, and my pronunciation and my accent are unbearable, sorry. <laughs> so I would understand perfectly that you might, you might feel like... I need uh, the other one. Okay. You might feel like E.T., the extraterrestrial, and just want to go home. But now it's too late. Well, 
Greetings to the organizers and workers of the 44 World Hospital Congress. Greetings also to the members of the International Hospital Federation and especially warm welcome to the Unió Catalana Hospitals, who have kindly invited us to participate as social partner of this event that is so important for the health professionals and the peoples of the world. Thank you for being with us here today to all the attendees, both those here in person and the virtual ones. Thank you to the speakers and the international internet artists for your support and for your explanation through these marvelous photos. It is an honor for us to be with you in a year that has been so emotional for the Fundación La Marató de TV3, as we research the 30th edition, thanks to the involvement of millions of people who imagine a better world. Because can you imagine a place in the world where every year members of the public give up their time, their resources, their knowledge, and their private lives, all altruistically? to improve their people's world. Can you imagine street festivals in all the towns and cities of Catalonia with thousands of children, teenagers and adults publicly sharing the common man to the, pub to the people who need them? Can you even imagine what, what it all means to rise to 160 260 million euros to fund a thousand research projects run by 8,600 investigators. So now please stop imagining, because in Catalonia since 1992, all that has been a reality thanks to the people like you, and it's called La Marató de TV3 in Catalonia Radio, a unique project because of its mission, participation, trust and solidarity. Thank you for the solidarity that made the excellent possible and incredible in the case of the result of the latest La Marató dedicated to COVID. 98 research teams are already investigating and helping to save lives, to save lives. And all thanks to the almost 14 million euros, 14 million euros from the donors with the help of the volunteers, the testimonies, the families, associations, the hospitals, the doctors, the health centers, the social organizations, the world of culture, art, the businesses and their workers, the thousands of popular activities, the publicity session in 90% of the secondary school in Catalonia, the media, etc, 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 and all despite COVID. This pandemic has been and is a mirror in which many people have come to realize that we are more vulnerable than we imagined. A mirror in which many people have discovered the importance of spreading information, raising awareness and research to overcome challenge, to reinvent ourselves, to save lives. A mirror in which everyone has seen that together we can get off it. That by joining forces we are better, as with the Marathon. 30 years, the reflection of a mirror that fills us with emotion. We will celebrate as we like best, working for a great cause, for a great necessity, the mental health, a problem that affects us individually and collectively, because according to the experts, one in every four, one in every four, will have problems of mental health in the course of, of our lives. We should mobilize, participate, achieve resources, raise awareness to avoid the stigmatization, stigmatization. That these diseases still suffer for and the people, family, friends, associations, institutions that live with it. And this year's the publicity campaign says breaking down the walls. Help us to spread the word to improve the quality and expectancy of life of those who are affected. 
This 30th anniversary is filled with magic. And for that reason, I invite you to the charity concert for this year's La Marató, thanks to the Unió Catalana d'Hospitals and the Palau de la Música. It will be this Thursday evening in the Palau de la Música with a tribute to John Williams, who, as you know, is the composer who has won most awards in the history of the cinema with five, five Oscars. Among others, he has made us dream with the soundtracks of films like Star Wars, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Jurassic Park, Harry Potter, Jews, dun, 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 and as I approach the end, I am pleased to make an emotional and nostalgic trip to the year 1982. A year to remember, bearing in mind that obviously many of you have not yet been born. It was the year of a film that was not from John Williams, Basic Instinct, a film that was both loved and hated at the same time, and that brought box office records. When still, when still, the people still went to the cinema. Nowadays, not many people will own up to having seen it. And what soundtrack, what soundtrack accompanied the years, the year 92? The success of the groundbreaking video clip Black or White by Michael Jackson. I would like dance, but I don't know. Um, and although it may seem hard to believe it, in 1982, not everyone had the internet or a mobile phone. In fact, just a handful of privileged people had mobile phones the size of a carton of milk, like this Motorola 300 2000, which cost 3,000 euros. Yes, with almost no internet and no mobile phones, but with a lot of enthusiasm, that was the year of the first La Marató. A year that saw events of great importance for everybody. The Barcelona Olympic Games and the hola, hola, hola. But it was also the year of the farewells like that of the public library of Sarajevo. After it burned down during the siege of the city and over many days, the remains of those Barnes books, of those histories of life, remain flooring in the ruined streets of buildings. The children and the adults who had dreamed, who had loved, and who had known excitement reading those books now, no more than senders that flew around the city and were called the black butterflies. Today, thanks to the generosity during the 13 years with the Marató, thanks to your participation and the research projects that have been, that have been funded, other, other butterflies have been born. Butterflies that we have taken the liberty of calling blue butterflies, like the color that identifies your marathon. Blue butterflies that every year improve the quality and the expectation of life of our family members, our friends, of our people. Blue butterflies that believe in research, that love art and culture, that have trust and solidarity, in respect, in enthusiasm and ambition and in teamwork for a future that is better for everyone. Thanks for your blue butterflies. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Bernabé. I'd like to remind you for any new Congress members joining us, us now that you may be able to ask questions at the end of their presentations uh, through the app, so you can channel them through the app, please. Uh, just for you to know. So as we have seen, La Marato has two goals, to raise awareness and raising funds for biomedical research on different diseases. So to explain the whole process of sharing the funds that are obtained, I hand over to Dr. Marga Nadal, director of the Institut d'Investigació Biomedica in Girona, and a member of the Scientific Advisory Committee of the Foundation, who will present her speech titled from rigor and transparency to research of excellence. 
Please go ahead, Dr. Nadal. Okay, good morning. Um, thank you, everybody, uh, to be here and also to the organizers for inviting me. I have to say that I am one of the privileged ex-scientists uh, who uh, took advantage of this marathon. Uh, thanks to the marathon in 1993, I was already born and I was, <laughs> my, my hair was not that gray, but <laughs> I was uh, kind of old. Uh, I could do my PhD thesis on uh, Down syndrome. That was back in 1993. So the purpose of today is uh, trying to explain you from um, the operational uh, evaluation of projects, how this is uh, performed by the people in, in the foundation, which is a hard work. And let me show you if I'm capable of explaining everything so that you understand it. I call this the wheel of of a fortune because it's a privilege for the system, the research system in Catalonia to have the marathon. Raquel, sorry, Raquel was telling me that maybe we, it was about time that we, we shouldn't need the marathon, but unfortunately we still need the marathon. And uh, thank you to everybody who has made it possible. So this is uh, the wheel. No, sorry. And we go, okay. Anyway, it's okay. Um, this is the wheel. It starts with the TV program, which I'm not going to talk about because I'm not an expert, but uh, you have seen the video that it's uh, very amazing. And the most important thing here is that every single person in Catalonia, no matter the, no matter the age they have, they know about the marathon. And uh, I think I don't know anybody who has not participated in social activities. This is uh, the most popular activity in Catalonia every year. So um, it's very popular and it's, uh, people are very sensitive. Not only people are sensitive for this, but they are sen the researchers are sen sensitive about this money. It's not the same uh, doing your research from taxes than doing your research from this money, okay? So then you have the call for proposals. You have the project submission. Uh, we have another commission that evaluates the administrative and um, basic scientific uh, things that fulfill the, the call. And then we have a project evaluation and then the day of the awards and, and grant agreements. But this wheel also has a peripheral wheel that always takes place, which is the selection of diseases you have seen in the video. Uh, every year the marathon is oriented to a uh, different disease and this, uh, how, how this disease is selected is very important, important. The marathon or the foundation calls to the patient associations, uh, health uh, providers and also to research institute which is the disease that should be the center of that program. Uh, and the program is selected or the disease is selected according to need of fundings and uh, social relevance, okay? And then uh, there is a, a continuous scientific follow-up of the projects to make sure that the, the, the scientists are doing okay and of course an economic follow-up uh, of the... And after the three or four years Basically, it's after five years since the, the, the program, there is a symposium. And the symposium is uh, the accountability of the researchers uh, to society to explain what have they achieved and what they have done with the money that they were given uh, in the marathon, okay? So let's start to the program. I said, I'll escape that. I like this, fo this photo very much, although we are on the 30th edition, but uh, I, I like it and I think it's very representative of uh, the enthusiasm of everybody that day. A call for proposals. This is open pretty much one month after the TV program. Uh, researchers have about one month to prepare the proposals. And there's the project submission. Uh, uh, proposals are sent to the foundation. And then, as I told you, there is these commissions that make sure that from the administrative point of view and from the scientific point of view, like in terms of teams, curriculum, publications, and so on, are okay. 
and then those uh, projects are sent to AQUAS, which is the agency, the quality agency and health um, evaluation from the uh, Ministry of Health in Catalonia. Then the projects are evaluated. And, and, and stop, I will stop here a little bit just to explain you how this evaluation is performed. Projects, as I told you, are sent to the foundation. Project managers make, make sure that the administrative uh, staff are okay, it's okay. Then the projects are, are evaluated, evaluated by another commission to make sure that the requirements, like in terms of the research group that needs to be composed by a PI with experience in that disease and so on and so on. And then those projects are then sent to the AQUAS, okay? And then AQUAS does not evaluate the projects. AQUAS organizes the evaluation of the projects. AQUAS has a panel of uh, international experts. This is a very difficult thing to do because they need so many international experts because the, the disease is different every year. So uh, AQUAS selects the evaluators. They work remotely and they evaluate all the proposals. Ideally, one project has to be evaluated at least for two experts. And um, then when the evaluations are performed, now, there is a panel with a selection of those evaluators and, and a panel director uh, who is uh, appointed by the AQUAS. And then you, in, in, those, uh, in this panel, you have experts in basic research in epidemiology and clinical uh, research uh, concerning that disease. Okay, then um, those people meet uh, for one and a half day, pretty much, and I know that. And the important thing here is that you have two observers, one from, the, from La Fundación, and there's uh, also project managers and people from Aquas to make sure that there are no biases in those selection. So after this work for one and a half days, the list of projects, uh, they are, uh, the list is prioritized and uh, each project, no matter if it's going to be funded or not, it has a scientific report, uh, which is very important for us, for scientists to make it better the next time. So uh, Aqua sends the prioritized list to the Fundació and the Fundació um, organizes the scientific advisory board, board that revises the list and uh, according to the money that has been raised, they decide where to cut the list, uh, depending on the funds that, they, uh, that are available. And then finally, it's the Fundación La Marató de TV3 uh, Board of Trustees who says okay with this uh, uh, selection. Okay, and there's the first uh, festival, I would say, where uh, researchers are called to say, yes, you've been awarded with the project of La Fundación Amarato, and uh, this is performed in a, in a room like this, and everybody is happy. Okay, <laughs> so they, have, they take these pictures, which uh, this is going, in, is, uh, been going on for now 30 years. Okay, so this is the wheel of fortune for researchers and the research system, and it's I hope I have convinced you it's done in a rigor, transparent, and thanks to that, research, biomedical research in Catalonia is now one of the top uh, countries in the world, I would say, although we have a limited capacity of funding. So just my last, must, my last slide, as uh, Luis mentioned, the, the marathon in these 30 years has raised 215 or almost 16 million euros. This is a, a, lot, a lot of money and um, almost, almost um, 1,000 biomedical research projects and almost 10,000 people have benefited from this. And as I mentioned just now, many and relevant achievements in the, in the knowledge, prevention, treatment and prognosis of several diseases. Um, thank you very much and I hope that uh, it, it, it ha I, I have been able to show you that this is done in a very serious way. Uh, thank you. You have the questions?
Thank you, Dr. Nadal. We'll go for the questions afterwards once we, when we finish the presentations. In the 30 years of its history, La Marató has promoted, you've seen the figures already, the numbers, 949 research projects involving more than 9,300 investigators who have contributed remarkable improvements in a large number of diseases. On behalf of all those, I invite Dr. Beatriz Bellosillo, investigator of the Instituto Hospital del Mar de Investigaciones Médicas, IMIM, and head of section of molecular diagnosis of the pathology service of the hospital, Hospital del Mar. She will make her presentation, the double R, reputation and responsibility of the investigator awarded funding by La Marató. Go ahead, Dr. Villasillo. Good morning to all of you. First of all, I wanna thank the organizing committee for bringing up this session here today and the organizers of La Marató for inviting me to be here. It's for me an honor and a privilege to be a representative of all the researchers that have received a project during these years. As Raquel says, said, I work in the Institute of Biomedical Research of Hospital del Mar. My research area is cancer. I work in a pathology department performing all the genetic studies that are needed to decide which is the best therapy for oncological patients. And uh, when I was preparing this uh, session, I still remember the moment, the ceremony when the grant was given to me as principal investigator. You are always happy when you get a grant, of course, because it gives you the funding to perform your research. But uh, in that case, uh, apart from being happy, I could feel the huge responsibility that was falling on my shoulders. As I was uh, receiving the money, as Dr. Nadal said previously, from so many anonymous people that are giving, are trying to help, are trying to give you the money so you can help other people out there. And of course, researchers, we always try to do our best with that money. But in that case, I felt the need of giving something back at the end of the research proposal. And uh, I won't go into lots of details, but I think it's important to explain you a little bit. The project we were developing was developed at our institution together with another hospital, Hospital German Strias. These are the two teams that participated in, in this project. And uh, the aim of our project was cancer, as I said, and especially lung cancer, which is a type of cancer very common uh, worldwide, and also one, one of the ones that has most or highest mortality. And uh, what we already knew at that time, it was several years ago, but uh, we knew that genetics play an important role in these types of tumor, that uh, not all the tumors were equal. They were different uh, diseases depending on which gene was altered in lung cancer. And the most important thing was that new treatments were being developed depending on the gene that is altered. And uh, it was becoming crucial to know which genes were altered to decide which were the best therapeutic options for those patients. So the aim of the project was this one, was to perform a genetic characterization of different types of tumors, and then could, so we could improve this patient management. So that was very clear. And uh, what we aimed to do was to use the uh, infrastructure that was present in the research institute to do that. Those are uh, high level sequencers, next generation sequencing it's called today. And uh, it was being very much used in the research setting. So project was very clear to perform next generation sequencing in lung cancer tumors. 
And the first thing we found was that the machines that were available at the Research Institute, which were super good machines, were not the best ones for the samples that we had from our patients. So we had to adjust the project, which had been initially aimed at performing uh, uh, sequencing and buying reagents. We needed not only the reagents, we needed to buy machines and we needed to hire people to do that. And that is one of the great things of this type of grants. Here, at least in our country, we have grants to buy reagents. We have specific buy grants to buy machines. We have a specific grants to hire people. But sometimes you don't have the money you need at the moment you have to develop your project. And here we had the possibility of making that budget flexible. Of course, with the justifications and explaining why we needed to do that. But this money, was, we, they helped us to adjust it in the way we needed it. And with that, we were able to get forward. We found that samples were small. We found that we didn't have always enough material. And at that point, also, new methodologies were coming up that we could perform genetic profiling, not using tissue, but using peripheral blood, because we have circulating material, genetic material. So we could get that material. And what we did was also modify the project to be able to perform all the molecular analysis using peripheral blood samples in what today is called liquid biopsy and what today is being used in routine. And we perform great studies. We had several publications, which is great for researchers. That's what we need to get afterwards new grants. But the most important for us here was, as I said, my responsibility on what was I turning back to society. And this research project had a direct impact in the management of the oncological patients at our institutions. We were able to bring this next generation sequencing techniques that had been used in the research setting to the hospital. We were able to start working not only with lung cancer patients, but with other types of cancer. We were able to set up this new technology of liquid biopsy. And now I have the feeling that we were able to return to society what they had uh, gave us. We are now have the ISO quality accreditation to perform as reference center in our uh, community, in our country, as uh, molecular testing. So thanks to this grant, we have helped, I'm sure, many people. And so I want to give a great thank you to the Marató and La Fundación La Marató for the work they're doing and ask them to continue, please, helping us. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Bellosillo. Dr. Bellosillo's team have led one of almost a thousand projects that have made tangible breakthroughs in the prevention, diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment of diseases dealt with by La Marato. And this money has, made, has been made possible also thanks to the setting up of a unique telethon that first came to life in 1992, as Mr. Bernabe reminded us, on TV3 first, and since 2009, has also had a special five-hour program on Catalonia Radio. So now it is the turn of Ms. Angel Molina, a journalist with TV3 and director of several editions of the program La Marató, including this year's, which will be dedicated to mental health. Ms. Molina will explain the keys to the success of this participative charity macro program that has served as a model for other international television services. Please go ahead. Good morning, thank you so much for your attention. I stand here today in front of the members of the top health institutions of the world, and I feel so very humble. After all, I'm just a journalist. I only work on TV. However, on the other hand, we might have something in common. 
because we as content creators from either corporate or public media do have a responsibility, as you do, towards our society. And this TV telethon is a perfect example of this responsibility. Now, as I speak, you'll see some images of the last year's edition. And if you ask me how we do it, the answer is work, work, and respect towards the institution we represent. But let me tell you the whole story from the beginning. As Raquel said, 19th of December, 1992, 6.05 p.m., the journalist Angels Barceló approached our audience and told them for the first time, here begins a long television telethon, we will be with you until midnight, and which was two clear goals, to promote biomedical research of excellence and to raise awareness about this disease. That year, the disease was leukemia. Our audience very well received this revolutionary idea, which was an act of responsibility of a young and committed public television, which was only nine years old. So much so that 30 years later, it has become a date on the calendar of the Catalans. La Marató has become a country reason and a country pride reason, a program that no longer belongs to TV3 and that belongs to everyone. And that's what makes it so very special. The format was very new and innovative, combining scientific dissemination, raising awareness of the need for research with a great television show in which the viewer can actively participate by organizing activities and raising funds for the same objective. And of course, making their donation. 30 years later, the program is a monographic show dedicated to a different theme or disease each year, lasting 15 hours of live television, which also include pre-recorded pieces such as reports, small documentaries, and well-crafted moments of entertainment. We build this long, intense, and immense program around almost 30 first-person testimonies. People who help us understand what it means to live with a certain disease. People who, with their generosity and courage, help us to empathize, to face the numbers and the needs to do research in this health area. We get to this testimony with the help of an expert council made of the leading figures in this disease, members of the most relevant hospitals and health centers in the country. They open the doors of their institutions to us and help us select from among their patients and always with their consent, the stories that will help us the most to raise awareness in our audience. These first person testimonies, both anonymous and famous, force us to listen to realities that we sometimes consider too distant or that we do not want to see. These testimonials are critical to understanding that some people's everyday lives are very complicated and it is mostly because these diseases are not fully accepted by our society. Then we complement this first person look with the contribution of the experts, which help the viewer understand what this illness means at the level of symptoms, treatment, and above all, why it is so important to continue doing research in this area. In order not to lose the viewer's attention and gain their complicity and company through the day, we offer this content accompanied by musical performances and entertainment of the highest level and quality. And yes, the artists also give up their talent altruistically that day by taking part in this Solidarity Gala. And yes, we see a testimony and then we move on to a moment of spectacle and entertainment. And how can we do that? We do this because we do it with respect and because in the end, it's all about emotions. And we believe it's as worth laughing as crying. 
In this very special gala, we also have the support and complicity of all the anchors and presenters of the channels, such as Raquel, who put aside their sense of ridicule or fear and end up doing things such as singing or dancing that they would only do for La Marató. And they do it because they know it's the way to win us over once again to the complicity of our audience. Last but not least, the program takes to the streets through our territory and show us how organizations, associations and citizens have organized activities, performances, popular races, street markets, to raise funds for the same purpose. And it's wonderful to see how since the beginning of December, in every town in Catalonia, there is a banner that shows that they are doing all sorts of activities for the telethon. The program also features a look at the telephone set, an icon of the format, which collects the calls that our audience makes through the day to make their donations. And these donations are reflected on a marker, we, which you can see right now, located in the center of our set and which we update through the day. The marker is the symbol of the marathon. We like to say that the final figure of race money is not that important, but in the end, the most magical moment of this long day and what gives meaning to so many months of teamwork is the final marker, in which all the suffering involved in organizing an event of these characteristics is transformed into the euphoria of seeing how the solidarity of the Catalan people has no comparison and how thanks to the efforts of all citizens, we can contribute to a better future to our society. Because that is what this program is looking for, to improve the lives of future generations. The risk, and at the same time, the big challenge, is not to make the format too predictable or repetitive year after year. So every so often, the whole team is renewed and the format adapts to new ideas, formulas, and personalities or sensitivities. The ingredients are the same, but the format should surprise the viewer every year with the staging and the content. This whole project involves a huge, complex balancing act that involves a lot of responsibility for the team that makes and leads it. And of course, as you can imagine, as the day approaches, pressure rises. But we are a team that have grown with La Marató as spectators and as professionals, literally. And we are proud of it. Most importantly, we believe in it because this TV show tells us that Catalonia tells the world that we believe in research and we believe in the future. So what we do is fighting disease from science and fighting misunderstanding from social mobilization. And of course, we show it on TV. The day after, we all wake up as if we had climbed Everest, but we all end up repeating this adventure because nothing makes a human being happier than helping others. And you who save lives every day know more about it than anyone else. So thank you very much for your time and attention. And we look forward to seeing you on December 19th, 2021, in front of the TV, your tablets or phones, following the TV3 marathon dedicated to mental health, a very special and necessary one. Thank you very much, Ms. Molina. The roles of marketing, of publicity, and of course the great work of the creators of audiovisual, digital, and graphic campaigns have become essential elements for bringing La Marató close to people's hearts. The graphic campaign, but most of all the TV commercial for La Marató, is a reference point in the world of publicity, a product that has won a number of awards in prestigious international competitions. What is what is it that makes a commercial triumph or go totally unnoticed? Well, now I can ask Mr. Camille Roca, five times Cana winner, winner 
and founder of K1000 Collaborative Communication to tell us about the trick that he has used for 20 years to create such a singular and successful advertising campaign for La Marathon. So please go ahead, Mr. Camille. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is kind of obvious, you know, it's 30th anniversary for La Marató. I joined La Marató 23, 20, 22, 23 years ago, something like that. And, okay, and at the beginning, I start with that word, strategy. I mean, an that guy like me, come from creative world, I start with strategy. And there was a sense for that, you know, a strategy is what gives a consistency on what you do. At that time on, that was around 1998, 99, the, the word we use in advertising was creativity. But since I was coming from planning, strategic planning and creativity as well, I thought, hey, let's go one step down and let's start with the strategy. What was that strategy? Strategy is what makes things last. Uh, my previous, the previous speaker, uh, uh, she was saying about the fact that advertising, the, the, this commercial has become such a, a topic, an item here in the Catalan society. Actually, there are two commercials which are really, really important for the whole uh, society here. The first one is for a beer, for Catalan beer. Everybody knows about that. The second one is the communication for the telephone, for La Marató. Why was that? We used that strategy. It was such a simple strategy. Everything that we did had to work on solidarity, as the previous speaker was saying. Solidarity in the sense of bringing up bringing out all that human sense of, you know, togetherness, of caring each other. At the same time, I, uh, advertising could go on solidarity or actually could go on investigations, on research, explaining people, you know, that was the object of the telethon. The third one was to raise awareness on disease, on the disease that we were affecting that year these years mental health so there's we got to raise awareness that was the only three topics that we're allowed to do on our communication uh, and that's important because that's the basic principle in marketing called UPA, U, usp unique selling proposition which means don't talk about everything just say something and do it right so at the beginning i told them hey let's do it like that and I, used, I, could do that, I could do that because I was coming from Disney in Miami when I used to work there. Things were strategic before. But the main thing, it was in the middle, which is the tonality. The tonality is what sets a communication that you from scratch recognize that belongs to that brand. When you see an IKEA commercial like this, it's an IKEA commercial. When you do a Coke commercial, like this it's a co-commercial so that's what we start from scratch to do for the um, the channel 3 telephone tonality had a lot to do with emotions something i decided it was let's bring out the emotions of all the catalans all the people that is watching the telephone because and i'm sorry to say that you know emotions are tied to scratching their pockets, to getting their fun, to getting some funds, you know? There's, there's a natural link on that. When you touch somebody's heart, you, can, you have the possibility to touch somebody's pocket. And this is what it's about, because all the projects, whatever we do in the telephone, at the end, it's through some funds that we're getting from the people that's taking part in the telephone. So that was the tonality because I could we could have gone like a rational tonality we could have gone to a science fiction tonality no way Jose the point was going through emotions emotion is what drives la marathon 
at least in communication. I would say in all the senses of the marathon, because you will see during the whole day that there's a lot of emotions that are kind of cluttered in the whole day, but in the communication from the beginning. But always, don't forget about that. Oh, on using the solidarity, on using what I was saying, the disease and the research. Solidarity was the first thing that we handle when we start with the marathon. Solidarity in terms of, hey, let's bring to the Catalan people the fact that we all are a bit happy family, whatever you call it, but to bring that, that into the people. So I'm gonna show you a commercial. It's hora de que em poseu, si us plau. Bueno. Um, they're gonna put a commercial that worked on solidarity. That was one of the previous ones. That was the most seen commercial in YouTube in South America. And in La Yum, no sé si podrán ver o ver, eh? pero. Okay, just go ahead and put it. When you're down and troubled and you need a helping hand and nothing, well, nothing is going. Close your eyes and think of me And soon I will be there To brighten up even your darkest night You just call up my name And you know Sharing is a human instinct. Two, call 1 800 Telethon on Channel 3. That was in the period that we used to talk about solidarity. So using commercials like this one, um, you were spreading the word. That was for the first phase of the communication strategy. And then we moved to, sorry, okay, to the second part, which was, which was investigation, research. Now, once you know the whole society knew about the fact that telephone was equal to, to, to solidarity. It was about to take the next step. The next step was, let's go about, you know, there's an objective, clear objective here, which is investigation, which is research. So we went through commercials like this one. Please go ahead. This is Anthony Van Loon. When he was a little boy, he wanted to be a football player, or so he told me, and he achieved his goal. He was 19, he was playing in the first division and had been pre-selected for the Beijing Olympics. But in July 2008, things went wrong when he was told in a routine medical checkup that he'd be unable to play again. His brother, also a football player, had already had to stop playing football due to the same disease. Devastated, he sought a second opinion and the diagnosis was confirmed. Right ventricular dysplasia. I'll never forget his face when he learned that the disease poses a risk of loss of consciousness and sudden death. He was willing to do anything to play football again, and we couldn't refuse. Anthony underwent a pioneering medical treatment involving a complex operation. Months later, he returned to a football pitch. That day, all of us were there, cheering him on. Everything went well, until he collapsed to the ground. Victory 
His implanted defibrillator sprang into action and he came back to life a few seconds later. Channel 3 Telethon. Call and donate so the research can keep performing miracles. Miracles can happen. Easy, easy picking. So the next, once we got all the society really, really sensitive towards research, that was about to do the next step. Next step was to focus on raising awareness on each year's disease. So people, you know, could know about the disease we were dedicating the telethon that year. And that was because we had already gone, gone through all the path. The path was now we are a big family. The second is, and this, what we do is, has, has an ending, has a finality, has a, a purpose. So now I can go, now that you understand everything, I can go and deal with raising awareness. That's an example of something that we have done for, for, for a disease. Please play it. strokes and brain injuries. The Channel 3 Telethon. Bring out your good side. Okay, so I come back to oh, what's going on here. So a simple equation that we started 22, 23 years ago. The consistency has been the path on our communication that lead, for instance, to the very last one. That goal that got a an award in, in Cannes, like a few years ago. When you're weary Feeling small When tears are in your eyes I will dry them all I'm on your side Oh, when times get rough And friends just can't be found Like a bridge over Troubled water, I will lay me down like a bridge over troubled water. I will lay me down. When you're down and out. When you're on the street, when evening falls so hard, 
I will comfort you. See how they shine. Like my disability disappears. On December the 19th, call and help all those suffering from spinal cord and brain injuries feel like their disability has disappeared too. TV3 Telethon. And just right before finishing up, I'd just like to thank you, Olivia, for your attention, but especially I'd like to thank to all the production houses that during the 23 years have been doing that for free. For free all the technicians, all the people involved, all the crew that has been working that because they believed in the marathon. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Mr. Rocca. It's hard to recover after seeing these ads, right? Whoa. So La Marathon, this is a project that fosters strength, cohesion, integration, participation, publicity, research that creates jobs and most of all is a project made for and by people. This initiative would have no sense without the trust, the emotion, the hard work and the involvement of the public. I said before that La Marato has left a deep mark on my life, on many people's lives I would say, and what has made the greatest impact has been the direct contact with the generous people who come to the program to offer their witness and contribute in that way to normalizing the diseases, to bringing them close and making them visible. Now we will hear a good example of what it means to be generous and sharing. We are fortunate to have Ms. Elisenda Skritche a breast cancer patient, the Institut Català d'Oncologia, who featured in the graphic campaign of La Marató 2018. Elisenda will tell us about her personal involvement in La Marató. So go ahead, please, Ms. Escriche. The floor is yours. Good morning. It is a pleasure for me uh, to offer my witness to this important Congress. 1992 was a very special year for me. In the summer, we had the Olympic Games in Barcelona. In September, I started at secondary school. And in December, there, were the, there was the first edition of La Marata de TV3, which we watched with great expectation and interest. What was this very long charity program going to be like? It looked interesting. Who would have said to that 14-year-old girl that 20 years later, she would beat cancer. And that, sorry, <laughs> and, and that a bit later, who would be the image on the poster of La Marato de TV3? Whoever could have told me that. Living with cancer was very hard, as you can imagine. It was a tough process physically, because the treatments and the multiple operations, but also emotionally and mentally. Once the primary treatments were finished, when the oncologist told me that the process was over and that my next, next appointment would be in three months' time, I felt a great sense of emptiness. What do I do now? Was the question that resounded inside me. I had to take up the reins of my life once again and get back into gear after the cancer, but I didn't know how to do it. Fortunately, in the Catalan Oncology Institute, where I was treated, there is a psychology service, and I was able to join a psychological therapy group. That group therapy was my life belt. I found out for myself the importance of mental and emotional health in complex health processes. This led me to work with my, with my psychologist to help to spread this message contributing my experience as an expert patient. 
And that was how life put me in the right place at the right time. All my life, I will remember that meeting with the directors of La Marato de TV3, who had come to the hospital to find information. When they explained the graphic campaign, they told that they, that they were looking for a real patient, and they suggested me straight away, whether I wanted to do it or not. I didn't think twice about it. I couldn't say no. They were offering me the chance to speak up about cancer for all the people who have lived with it, those who are living with it, and those who will live with it. If my experience could help to raise funds that would save lives or improve the quality of life of somebody with cancer, even just one person, it would have been worthwhile. I have always said, even, bef even before La Marto, that for me, research had saved my life. And I'll be eternally grateful to the research teams that had studied my type of cancer years earlier. They are the ones who saved, my, who saved me and made it possible for me to be here today, giving my witness. I felt deeply committed to the cause and to La Marato. And my answer was a firm yes, without the slightest hesitation. When they showed me the idea of the campaign, it looked impressive, even hard hitting, enough to make you close your eyes and think, oh my God. But the idea seemed absolutely right to me. Speaking about, about uh, diseases is stigmatized as cancer. Being able to say openly, cancer is a very tough process, much worse than whether or not your hair falls out. Cancer exists, it is an increase. We all know somebody who has had this disease and someone who has not survived. It's necessary to give visibility to it, moving beyond the taboos. They warned to me about the scope of the campaign all over Catalonia and about the impact that this could have in my life and in the lives of my family and friends. Everybody would know that I had had cancer, but I never hesitated. Surely they would understand what I was doing and if not, we would find a way to manage it. I repeat, could not say no. Contrary to what many people think, this was not an act of bravery for me to give my image for cancer research. It was an act of altruism, of solidarity, of commitment, of thanks. In fact, it was an act of love, a commitment that life would go on after cancer in full color. As you can see, the poster is a sequence of photographs in the different stages of the treatment of the disease. From the worst moment physically and emotionally, till I saw the, till I saw the light at the end, till I recovered my image and my emotional stability. There's a detail that I would like to point out in this poster. In the third and sixth photos, I'm wearing scarves on my head. They are very special scarves because <laughs> They are very special scarves because they are from my great friend, Christina. I met her in the post-cancer group therapy seven years ago, and we became both some friends. In 2018, she was in treatment for recurrence. For me, this poster represented a way of commemorating her, of remember, remembering the process that we, ha we had gone through together and that she was relieving. A push for life, for hope, a uh, we are in this together. Uh, don't worry, research will save you. The slogan said, research gives life. For her, it lent it life a little, but it could not save her. On the 14th of September this year, Christina passed away. That is why La Marato is so important in Catalonia, because there is so much yet to do, so many lives to save. It has been an indescribable source of pride for me to be involved in this awareness raising about oncology without any rose-colored spectacles from the reality of the people who live with cancer every day, respectfully, rigorously, and massively, as only La Marato de TV3 can do. The 2018 edition 
confirm what I had felt years earlier. This program touches people's hearts. We Catalans feel it very much as our own, and the way everybody gets involved is spectacular. I will say one thing. With the team that lies behind the Foundation and TV3, their generosity and affection, their involvement and professionalism, it is impossible for it to turn out badly. On the day of that marathon, I had the opportunity to take some telephone calls from people who wanted to make a donation. The first was from a boy who had broken open his piggy bank and was giving 20 euros. It was so moving. I spent most of the day in TV3, leaving the program, program from the inside. So much. Witness after witness, information capsules about cancer, entertainment, good music, 17 hours of program, and the honor of pressing the button of the final scoreboard. More than 10 million euros had been raised. Every minute of that, of that, of that sorry, 16th of December was tinged with two things, emotion and hope. It fills me with pride to have helped to make it possible. I would do it again. Research gives life was the slogan of that edition, but it could be the same for all the editions because the fundraising achieved by this program for research year after year gives life. So I can say that La Marató gives life and I hope that it will never, never, never stop doing so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Scritcher, for your very dear testimony. Well, these are the speeches planned for this information session. Mrs. Scritcher, Mr. Roca, Ms. Molina, Dr. Bellosillo, Dr. Nadal, Mr. Bernabe, thank you all very much for being with us. Um, and now I'll open the session to any questions, any doubts you might have, any final words maybe. Um, I don't see them through the app, so I don't know if there's, I guess there are no questions if I don't see them here. Uh, yeah, just go ahead. you know with these big grants do you actually get like an accountant working with you or how does it work and uh, my other questions related to disease prioritization do you sort of have like one or three diseases per year how do you do it and is Ministry of Health involved or is it just purely led by the uh, um, you know the, the charity and the public opinion and would you say this is like a, a social movement, a health service a social movement? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your words. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I understood your question regarding the grant. Uh, is about where they get the money? The, 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 the researcher, yeah, they get this grant. So. The, the researcher is not necessarily expert in, you know, handling the finance. S so do they have someone to support them? Oh, or? All researchers work in research institutes and in the research institutes uh, we have uh, uh, administrative support and um, there are project managers very expert in handling, uh, handling the funds. And, and the managers work together with the researchers to make sure that everything is performing the right way. Is that okay? And, and if I don't understand uh, badly, uh, the second question is about how the people, how the, the foundation choose the, the disease. In this case, every two years, uh, we ask for the people, for the hospital, for the, all the institutions, um, for the. Uh, for, for the people, because through the hospital, they 
uh, sent us to the foundation, uh, which DC or disease they would like that we uh, show in the in the program, and then for a period of uh, two years with a um, committee, we are choosing um, but about different question about if this DC has been done in 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 two, three, four, or ten years ago, or in cases that could be with uh, uh, diabetes and obesity, we uh, put together two, uh, two diseases because in the case of um, um, uh, obesity, it would be impossible that uh, when, we, when you achieve this amount of money, it would be impossible that um, and the uh, scientists uh, present uh, enough quantity of project to give the money. Then for us it's a problem. That, uh, then what we do? We put together two uh, diseases, two illnesses, because in the way that all the, these um, uh, illnesses have the same opportunity. Uh, in this case uh, was obesity, but in, 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 if you look in the, in the web, La Marathon of TV3, you can discover a lot of um, marathons that um, the purpose is not only one illness, is uh, different illnesses. And to make you to say that. She also asked about uh, if the money was only uh, from donations or also... The Ministry of Health was Thanks. involved. Yeah. Um, for me, for we, for all the people that come from the Corporación Catalana de Michel TV3 and, and the radio and the Fundación, it's an honor to say that all the money, every euro, every cent, come from um, the, the, um, the people, the citizen. And the amount is about um, 20, 30, 40, is not big amount. We have not uh, rich people that give money. Uh, we have a lot of uh, souls, a lot of Bihars, a lot of marvelous people that every year, although they have not money, they say, in, in a lot of cases, they say, please, I give 20 euros, but will you mind us for the La Caixa, the, the, the bank, that they take off the money the next month. This, this is marvelous. This is marvelous. And the secret of the, have you have seen the secret of, of this miracle, as he says, the secret is the, the, the citizens. Every year, two, three different uh, people from different countries ask us, I, w I would like to um, uh, repeat this project in my country, in my city, and the first, of, the first that we explain, you must get the support of the people because it's not only a project, a, a, a TV program. A TV program is marvelous. The, the scientific, they are marvelous. But we need the support of the citizen. Um, every year, during all the year, three million people participating. Three million people. And at the beginning, um, obviously, they wasn't. But every year, every month, that is, is the citizen that they want that we arrive at the 30 years. Thanks for the question. I don't know if there are any other questions. Yeah, there's, can you, can you hand the microphone over here, please? supports is uh, performed in public institutions, or mostly public institutions. You can access this information uh, through the website of the uh, Marco, the Fundación, 
but also you, I'm sure you can access this information through all the institutions or research institutions that get the money and work on uh, the research researchers. Please, please, please. And also they are organizing open uh, visits, so the people who have been giving donations can visit the research centers and we explain what we are doing, how we have used that money, and give back a little bit of, of the work we are doing with that money. This is a very uh, nice initiative that's been going on for, for the last four or five years, and it's the way the researchers get in touch with the citizens, and citizens enjoy uh, to see the researchers' results, and, and researchers also like to show the citizens that this money, this very special money, was used in the right way. At the end, we want that the citizen know in every uh, month, in every year, in at the end of the project, but before the end of the, of the project, they know what is the euro, every euro, every cent, and as we have nice people that they for they is not a problem that uh, to say come to my hospital and i want to show you it's an honor for us all of us all of us thanks for the question okay thank you so much i think we have to put uh to an end this session uh, as you have seen la marato is uh, the great outcome of millions of tones of effort trust emotion and solidarity of our society 30 years is a great milestone that encourages the foundation to go on for many years with the same determination, transparency and rigor as it has done up to now for the benefit of health. So I hope that you have found this session interesting, at some point entertaining too. Uh, now it only remains for me to encourage you, as uh, Mr. Bernabe said at the beginning previously, to attend the charity concert for La Marató, which uh, will be held in the evening of the 10th of November in the Palau de la Musica here in Barcelona. This event uh, has been organized by the International Hospital Federation and the Unión Catalana d'Hospitals, and the proceeds will go to raising awareness and research in mental health, which is the theme, as you know, of La Marató 2021. Thank you, all of you, for being us with more this morning, and have a great day.